بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار in the days of ramadan in the last 10 days it was series first started it was about the khulafa al rashidin each saturday some would take a lecture talking about one of the khalifas from those four khulafa radiyallahu anhum ajma'in and then the following then the week or the month following that it was about the four imams some would take a lecture concerning those four imams and then in the month of ramadan there was a four part lecture series based on the dua of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam The first three weeks, the first three Saturdays of Ramadan, they were dealt with. And the last week was not dealt with because it fell in the last 10 days and the management of the masjid felt it was not going to be ample time to do justice to the topic since the topic was so vast and there were so many things to be covered. and the short amount of time after the salat of a tarawih and the other prayer that the people prayed here the dua is the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that came in different formulas and in different ways one of the formulas is what was collected by imam muslim and it's not the beginning of the dua but it's the middle part of the dua but inside of the dua he says sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wasallam and he was given the jawami al kalam the jawami al kalam we stick to his qunut and what he said in the qunut and we stick to his dua because he was given the jawami al kalam the things that he said they were the best things to be said as a result of that when the bedouin man came and he wanted to learn the dua of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there were a lot He said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't have the ability to memorize all of these dua that you're saying and all of the dua that your companion Mu'adh ibn Jabal is saying as well. May Allah be pleased with him. And Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he was from the ulama of the companions. So he had the qudra and he had the imkaniyah, the ability and the power to memorize. So the man Nudandan ana wa Mu'adh Me and Mu'adh In our dua The many things that we say We are Gravitating around The things that you just mentioned So if the person were to say That general dua Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra ma sa'alaka Abduka wa rasuluka Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa sta'idhu bika Min sharaatha bika bihi Abduka wa rasuluka Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh allah i ask you for all of the good that your messenger and your prophet asked you of and i seek refuge in you from all of the evil that your prophet and your messenger sought refuge in you from it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to that companion this thing that you're saying this is what me and muav are around so if a person finds it difficult to memorize all of the dua or he hasn't done it yet but he has the goal and the objective to do it then that simple dua something that he should inculcate within his dua 
because he's asking for everything that the prophet asked for. And he's seeking refuge of the evil of everything that the prophet sought refuge in concerning the evil of Allah's creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the shahid from the kalam is, he was given the juwami al-kalam. So when he made dua, it's the best dua. It's the best dua. So in this particular dua, it's one of those tremendous duas that have a lot of benefits in it and a lot of fiqh in it. From what was dealt with in the month of Ramadan, this dua there is one that comes and he said it by itself, but is a bit different from the one that they gave during the month of Ramadan. That particular one that I'm about to tell you right now, inshallah, is the one that was collected by Imam Muslim. And there are some other things that came before he got to this point. And what he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what was dealt with is the statement, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa. وَمِنْ قَلْبٍ لَا يَخْشَعْ وَمِنْ نَفْسٍ لَا تَشْبَعْ وَمِنْ دَعْوَةٍ لَا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهَا Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge that doesn't benefit. And I seek refuge in you from a heart that doesn't fear you. And I seek refuge in you from a soul, from a nafs. لَا تَشْبَعْ It never becomes satisfied it always wants more and the more he is the more of the dunya it never becomes satisfied and then the fourth thing is i seek refuge in view from the dua that is not answered in the month of ramadan due to the fact that there was enough time for the previous three speakers the first speaker and the first saturday he dealt with knowledge that doesn't benefit the second week he may make dua and he doesn't get the reward of his dua. Thus, this hadith said, from a dua that is not answered. It's not answered because he doesn't know what he's doing. One of the many reasons. Because he doesn't know what he's doing. So it is not answered. It's like the person who prays and he doesn't know what he's doing. Individual who makes salat, gives zakat, hajj, umrah, doesn't know what he or she is doing. Makes dawah in Allah Azza wa Jal, doesn't know what they're doing. As a result of that, put themselves in a position where they render their ibadah from the ibadat that they're trying to do null and void. Concerning the dua is from the most important ibadat in al-Islam. It's from the most important. And from the delil of that is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned an authentic hadith, مَن لَا يَدْعُ اللَّهِ يَغْضَبْ عَلَيْهِ Whoever doesn't make dua to Allah, Allah becomes angry with him. Whoever doesn't make dua to Allah, Allah becomes angry with him. And one of the reasons for that, as the ulama of Islam, they said and they put forth, is because a dua is one of the clearest delils, clearest proofs of the ubudiyah of the slave. I need you brothers, inshallah, as we to try to memorize this word, put it in your Islamic vocabulary, inculcated in the Arabic words that you know. It's one of the most important words in Al-Islam. Al-Ubudiyah. The word Abd is from that. Al-Ubudiyah. It means servitude. The whole of the surahs of the Quran, almost all of them, there is someone in those surahs making dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Ma'idah, all of those surahs, they come and there are, he made dua, dua, dua. And as those scholars said in the past, it is possible that a person can become an alim in one bab from the abwab of al-Islam. We have some people, the individual is a mujtahid mutlaqa. He is a scholar in everything. Like Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He's a scholar in everything. And then it's possible that the person is a mujtahid who is a scholar in his madhab or a scholar in fiqh or a scholar in hadith or the language of the Arabs or in tafsir. But he may not be a scholar in other things. But the scholars used to say that it's possible that an individual can become a prolific scholar in one bab from the abwab of al-Islam. We should have someone from amongst us who 
he really knows all of the dua of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or you would be hard pressed to say to him, what's the dua for this and what's the dua for that? And he doesn't know. So the person from our community, from you brothers, myself included, why not have the niyyah of getting the ilm and nafi, the beneficial knowledge in which the person is going to make it his business to learn all of the dua at least. Where? From the time he woke up in the morning to the time he went to sleep, he can say a dua for 95% of the things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for and what he made dua about. One of the main things that we always tell people when they want to become students of knowledge and they say, advise me, what should I read and what shall I learn? First thing we tell them is learn the book of Allah, learn how to memorize it, learn how to read it correctly and learn its tafsir and then go to the atriya. Go to the dua of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because you'll find in our day and time the tulab al-ilm. We are negligent in regards to this dua. In regards to this bab from the abwab of knowledge. He doesn't know some of the most important dua like the dua of what he says when he's going to have relationships with his family in the hopes that if he were blessed with some offspring he'll get divine protection for his children from the shaitan or from the shayateen. Concerning this particular issue of the dua that is not accepted, as I mentioned, the dua is from the most important ibadat of al-Islam. The Nabi, he mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in an authentic hadith, a dua have kibr about our ibadah, they will enter into the hellfire and they will be lowly. So ibadah in this ayat means a dua those people who are arrogant, those people who don't make dua to me because they feel that they are self-sufficient or they feel that they can solve the problem in a way relying on the intellect, in a way relying on their power, their prestige, or something like that, then those are the mutakabirin. So the dua in al-Islam is ibadah. There are many issues concerning what a person can do or not do which will render his dua null and void. But before dealing with that, just want to remind you once again, the dua is from the mulk of Allah, answering it or rejecting it. And it may be that a person brings everything to the table. He is doing everything that he is supposed to be doing, as the Prophet did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet Allah does not Accept the dua of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except as Allah sees fit. So the Prophet made many dua to the Nabi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a number of dua to Allah and Allah didn't accept his dua. A number of dua. He made dua against the kuffar and Allah revealed the ayat of the Quran. You have nothing to do with the issue, Ya Muhammad. If Allah guides them or Allah punishes them. And the people that the Prophet ﷺ was making dua against, that Allah would destroy them, Allah guided them to Al Islam. And they become wills, He'll accept it. If He doesn't will, He won't accept it. And it's not for anyone to put His foot in this arena and He says to someone, Wallahi, Billahi, Tallahi, Allah won't accept your dua because you drink khamar. Allah can accept the dua of a person who drinks khamr. Wallahi, billahi, tallahi. Allah won't accept your dua. You make all the dua you want against me. Allah won't accept it because you're not salafi. Because you're a person and you don't pray. You don't wear hijab. La kalla. Can't say that to someone. We mentioned to you yesterday. Allah Ta'ala accepted the dua of Iblis. Qara Rabbi anzirni ila yawmi yuba'athun. Iblis said, oh my Lord, give me respite, give me a chance, give me some time until the day that Benny Adam will be raised up. He made dua to Allah and he said to him, innaka min al -mundarin. You are from those who have been given respite. You are from those who have been given a chance. So since the Iblis is a regime and he is the imam of kufr and shirk and dalal and fisq and fasad and dhul, still Allah Azzawajal accepted his dua. If Allah accepts his dua, then you can't come and say to anyone, no one's like shaitan, 
No one's like him. No one is parallel to him in evil. In a famous hadith that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared with his companions, he said that Jibril came to him and said to him, Ya Muhammad, if you only would see him, if you would have only been there, you would have witnessed when Allah Azza wa Jal was destroying Fir'aun. If you could have only seen me, Ya Muhammad, if you would have seen me, Jibril, when Fir'aun was being drowned, if you could have only seen how I rushed to the bottom of the ocean and I picked up some mud from the bottom of the ocean and I was taking that mud to hurry up to put in the mouth of Fir'aun because in the Quran, Fir'aun made a dua and he asked Allah Ta'ala to guide him and to forgive him for what he had done up until that point. He gave, he gave Musa, Harun, Ben Israel a lot of problems. And then he said before getting drowned, I believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa. I believe now. So before he made his complete dua, Jibril said, I hurried up to the bottom of the ocean and I went and I put that bob, that, that stuff from the bottom of the ocean in his mouth. I was afraid that Allah's rahmah was going to hit Fir'aun. So that shows a lot of things. It shows one thing, we shouldn't give up and we shouldn't despair of the rahmah of Allah, nor should we close the door of the rahmah of Allah on people, not to mention our own selves. But it also goes to show that even Fir'aun, like Iblis, Jibril, with all the knowledge that he had, he knew Azrajal can answer the dua of Firam. After all what he did, he made Tawbah at the last moment and Ibli, uh, for, uh, Jibril didn't want that to happen. So concerning the issue of a dua what are the things that are there that an individual can do or that he may not do that can cause his dua to be rejected? And there are many things. Many things that he can do to cause his dua to be accepted. And many things that he can do to cause his dua not to be accepted. Because the asal, the origin of things is, if you do the right thing, your dua will be accepted. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِي فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ Ya Muhammad, if my slaves, your followers, Benny Adam from the Muslimin, if they want to know about me, if they ask you about me, then tell them I'm close to all of them. They don't need any middle man. And the Ramal of Islam said about this ayat, I bring to your attention, all of the ayat of the Quran, every single ayat of the Quran, with the exception of this ayat, and this is from the treasures of the Quran, Every single ayat of the Quran, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنَ الْأَنْفَالِ They ask you about the spoils of war. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنَ الْمَهِيدِ They ask you about the woman's period. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُ I'll answer his call. But the condition is, let them believe in me and let them answer my call. The scholars of Islam, they said the meaning of that is, let them practice the religion. Let them do what I told them to do. Let them avoid what I told them to avoid. The ayat of the Quran, in tansurullah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqadamakum. If you people help Allah, Allah will help you and he'll establish your feet firmly. The great scholar and mufassir of the Quran, Imam al Suddi, in the book of Tafsir, Al Bahr al Muhit, he said the meaning of this ayat. If you help Allah, Allah will help you. If you practice the religion, Allah will answer your dua. Allah will help you by answering your dua. Because everybody is going to make dua for something. He needs money. He needs good health. He needs transportation. He needs a door to be open. He needs to be forgiven. He needs to be put into the jannah and so forth and so on. So that particular ayah khwari is an indication as we mentioned, that the asl, the origin of things is, if the person does the right thing and he practices the religion, then his dua, inshallah, is going to be accepted. That's what we what is not halal. And he's drinking what is not halal. Either because it is not halal in and of itself. It's not our dhabiha. 
is the biha of the Sikhs and the Hindus is pork. He's eating things that are haram. Or it's not halal in that the way that he came about obtaining the money for that thing is not halal. His drink is not halal. He's drinking khamar. Or the way that he obtained that thing is not halal. What he's wearing is halal, a haram. He has on gold. He has on silk. He's musbil. He has on things that are haram to wear. And he's making dua in things that are haram to wear. Some of the scholars of Al-Islam, due to their high level of existence in the taqwa, in all of the madahib, and all of the, and all of the, um, the times in Al-Islam, I don't want to call it extreme. I don't want to call it extreme. But the Muslims of Al-Islam in the past used to be pretty high. Today, if a thing has some ikhtilaf in it, some people say, look, it has ikhtilaf, so relax. It's okay, it has ikhtilaf, so relax. We have to be balanced with that thing. Because the people of the past, they weren't like that. Like the ayat of the Quran. Ya ayyul amanu, innama al-mushrikuna najis. Oh, you believe, the mushrikuna najis. Hassan al-Basri said, if you shake the hand with a mushrik, you have to make wudu. We don't take that opinion. And we don't describe that as being shadeed. But the way and the reason why he said that was the Muslims had such a level of izzah and such a level of honor that why do you need to touch a mushrik? The jamhur or the majority of the ulama, they said, Nejis, he is talking about shirk. So about kufr. They have kufr scholars who took that position. Some of the ulama of the zahiri madhab. So the point that we're making here, the point that we want to make here is some of those scholars say if an individual makes salat and he has gold on, salat is not accepted. If he makes salat with clothes that were obtained by ill-gotten means, his salat is batila. It's like he didn't cover up his aura because what he's wearing is like he's not wearing anything. They used to be on that level. The majority of the scholars weren't like that. But that's how some of those fatawa came. It didn't come as a result of ulama being mutshadideen. It didn't come as a result of the ulama of the past being negligent. No. It came as a result of them living and existing on a level of piety and taqwa that are uh, and wara that today you can barely find. If we had a person like that amongst us, we would find him very difficult to tolerate. We would describe him as being mutshadid even if he had a lot of knowledge and he went out of his way to make you comfortable. You can see this person, he's not much shedded. He's just serious. He's just serious. So anyway, the point here is, and he only accepts what is pure. The last one, Khwani, is that Allah Ta'ala commanded in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ اُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبُ لَكُمْ Your Lord has commanded you and he said in the Quran, Call on me and make dua and I will answer your dua. Udu'uni astajib lakum. Call on me and I will answer your dua. That's a promise of Allah Azza wa But as we mentioned, there are conditions for that. Things to do, things that you shouldn't do. If you fall into the things that we shouldn't do, it's a problem. If we do the things that uh, Allah Azza wa Jal made haram, then those things will be, you know, put you in a position where you won't accept it. And from them, it's for an individual to make dua in a loud voice, to make dua in the bid'ah way, like the dua of bid'ah, like what happens after each and every prayer. Allah Azza wa mentioned in the Quran in a number of ayat, Udu'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufyatan, innahu la yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Call on your Lord with humility. The scholars say humility is taking it easy, not being arrogant. وَخُفْيَةً Call on your Lord solely and strictly to and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have time for only one question and that's it. Akhi, when I was coming in, I saw you, but I was rushing and getting in because we arrived late. Those Shabbat, they had me tight. I don't want you to feel like I was dissing you, okay? Afwan. Any questions, Akhwani? Any questions for you, brothers? 
اوكي تفضل يا اخي كريم نعم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله is وعليك بالسلامة أي what's that can I have some of those man the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه وميداد كلماته I say سبحان الله by the number of his creation by the weight of his عرش by the number of his words and by the beauty of his throne and all of those things. So that goes to show the eloquence of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he would make that dua and say a small thing, but it's very weighty in the way that he's put in it. So if an individual to say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi by the number of what is in Allah's creation, there's nothing that would prevent him from saying that in the deen. There's nothing. It's a good dua. Inshallah. Any more questions? Okay, Ikhwani, what about the uh, kitab or the issue that you brothers want to deal with, Inshallah, on Tuesday and Wednesday since we are outside and we're done with the Ramadan? Abdul Qadir. Anybody else? Akhi, tfadda. Anybody else? 